It is crucial for any industry to be sustainable. That's how it can survive and prevent excessive loss. Before we found our way into the mainland Chinese market, it was basically quite difficult for us to produce a movie which cost more than 20 million Hong Kong dollars. Now, if we make a movie and spend more than 20 million, we can expect revenues from the mainland to amount to nearly 10 million. In China, there are certain types of movies that are off the list of those we can do in co-production with our mainland counterparts. So you're best not to address topics related to ethnic minorities, religion and homosexuality, to name a few. But to tap into any market, I believe that more or less, you must follow that market's rules and regulations. We are optimistic about the overall trend and attitude towards greater openness we now see in China. Many films we presumed would be banned in mainland cinemas, or even barred from co-production, are proving not to be a problem. For example, take the films Protégé and Confession of Pain. Protégé was about a drug dealer, whereas Confession of Pain was about a killer and just how bad a person can become. All this content was allowed on screen. While in the past things were different, things have opened up over time and the situation has become much better. I believe this process will continue in the future. We've seen this in the recent example of two cops and robbers films which have very explosive scenes, and even they have passed. We have experienced differences with our colleagues who distribute films when it comes to the angles from which we watch films. They focus on the strength of the casting, the action on screen and which markets the film suits. But they seldom evaluate things from the perspective of a director, such as the concept, how to best elaborate things or the fundamentals of a film. We have also seen many movies stand out unexpectedly. This was due to the fact that we are not only relying on the distribution department, but also because our people offered input in terms of production experience or creativity. It works, because they have the guts and that creativity. If we try to apply pure calculation to this creative industry, something is missing. That approach is simply not enough, and we need to add back some creative imagination. Many in our industry who have returned from working overseas seem to believe that a movie that's good at the box office must follow the Hollywood format or they think a film production company must operate under the Hollywood model, using their techniques for shooting or management style. But that's not possible given the resources we have. Another school of thought believes we should produce movies that we think are good, and they say the sort of film we would like to watch and our audience wants to see can go further into the outside market. After many years, the latter belief is proving to be more successful. Infernal Affairs is one example. I think we have to stand by our uniqueness. We should maintain our flexibility, but should not allow any one business model to awkwardly rule the industry. Now you can see the industry coming back to life. But compared to the 1980s and the early 1990s, there's still a big gap. You can see directors in our market are all born in the 1950s, a few born in the 1960s and many are born in the 1940s. There are very few who were born in the 1970s. In the past, some big and famous directors already had won awards in their 30s. Today, people that age are considered merely freshmen, and most of our directors are in their middle age. Therefore, the movie industry must be responsive to the market. Once it does that, it can survive. This industry will then attract new blood, 
and after training and development, they will gain the know-how and talent and become part of the industry. During Film Art, we will announce the production or preparation of a series of films we're doing this year. For example, we have two big productions, The Legend of Chen Zhen and Jian Yu Jiang Hu, which we will be putting into the cinemas. We're also participating in Tangshan Earthquake. We'll also be trying on some more alternative themes, such as Love in a Pop. So we are paying attention to the markets, including the China market, as well as what we consider the Hong Kong local taste, or those very alternative themes. Now, these may not be co-productions, but we'll still bring them to the screen.